Welcome to this video tutorial for the training data 3D in US Master. In this video we want to step through the tutorial given as a document in our installation. In this video we are using US Master version 9.0 and the demo data that you can download from our download page. After you installed the demo data, you should see similar file structure. You have a folder called training data underscore US 3D and you have the three subfolders images with 76 images here. And then you have the input data which are screenshots showing where you can find the control points, then the control point file as a text file. Then you have a folder project where you have already some predefined project settings in case you want to continue from a specific step. And in the backup you have here a prepared uh, file and a completed file where you also can already see the final result. However, in this video tutorial we will show you how to set up the complete project from the scratch and we will first define our working directory. So in options preferences you can define here where you want to run all your temporary files to be stored and in case you want to run, in this case, the systems temporary directory or the project directory, then these are predefined folders in the user defined directory. You can define yourself for this project where the data will be stored. I will create here a user defined directory where I store the data in this work directory during this process. Of course, if you run other projects, please always you have to change this or the previous data will be overwritten. In this tutorial, we have close range data and therefore we will start the project using US close range 3D. In the demo data here, we have control points which are in UTM 32 North, therefore we will change the coordinate system according to UTM 32 North. This is our target coordinate system, so when we import our data, it will always be converted to this coordinate system. For the video tutorial for the close range, we are using data from the company Alnaf in Backenang, Germany. Thank you very much. And they are using a SenseFly Albris data set. And we will import the frames and automatically extract from the images the camera. Therefore, we double click frame type and we import the folder with the images. Looking at the EXIF header from the JPEG images, we can see that the altitude of the GPS is given in sea level and that the focal length is already defined in the EXIF header. Therefore, we can create and assign the camera from the available EXIF data and we can import our GNSS information with the altitude defined as the height above sea level. Concerning the height above, for the mean terrain height, we could also double check here our control points where we can see that the terrain height is something around 370 or 380 meters, 
which we can then enter here as our mean terrain height. The camera will be defined from the EXIF and we can then, after we imported the photos, we can now see that we already have now GNSS data and we have a camera sensor defined. Looking at the camera, we can see that the maker and model is defined, the sensor size is given, we have then the focal length out of the EXIF file and the pixel size has been calculated. Looking at the GNSS data, we can see that they are converted into WGS84 North, uh, for, sorry, in WGS32 North, and also with standard deviations for the approximate GNSS information data. Looking at the frames, we see that at the moment the XYZ values are not existing, therefore we need to select them, go into edit, and then we can initialize the data here from the GNSS information, applying these values now to our separate photos and therefore they also have now XYZ values from the GNSS data applied. Finally we import our control points where we can select the text file from the input and where we have to define our separation which is in this case um, semicolon and there we can see this is now here our ID X, Y, and Z, and here the description where to find the point. The control points are already in UTM zone 32 north, so we can leave this here. And then for the standard deviation, we can keep the standard settings for our processing here. In case you want to have more realistic standard deviations, you can change the standard deviation for manual to 2 microns and automatic also to 2 microns, for the planimetric to 2 centimeters and for the height to 4 centimeters. This is then the values that you will find in our tutorial documentation. This is all we need to set up the project. We can save it. The project file is a text file and I create here for this demo a subfolder and save it here for this video tutorial. During the save we are storing uh, image stamp database for faster accessing the data later on in the georeferencing part and also to uh, access the data for other purposes. After successfully saving the project we can see here a 3D view. You can use the right mouse button if you keep it pressed and you move the mouse up or down or left or right you can look at the data here from a different perspective. If you use the wheel you can zoom in and out to look at the data too. So the project editor is still open when we save so we need to exit and then we can continue with the 3D reconstruction. This will be shown in the next video so thank you very much for watching this video tutorial and see you soon. Goodbye!